All right, we're gonna do a quick video to show you how to do a secondary access in Excel. So let's just start by building a simple single access chart first, which I think given that you searched how to use, how to add a secondary access, you already know how to do a single one. So we're just gonna do, it doesn't really matter what you do. So we'll do a line graph um, and clean it. we'll clean it up a little bit. And you can see I didn't manage to get my uh, years in there. So we're gonna select the data and we are going to include the years. So here you can see on the x-axis, we have our years, which our data is over here on the left. And we have our data points here. And right now, what we wanna do is say add growth. So this is an absolute number, you know, maybe it's sales, we had 100 in 2016, 125 and 17. But if we wanna know how much it grew between 17 and 16, we're gonna use a formula and divide the 17 by the 16 and subtract it by one. And that actually gives us a percent uh, and we can do that all the way to the bottom. So now we know how much we've grown. You can see we had a good year in 17, 18, 19, a little bit less, 2020, a very good year static in 21 and a big decline in 23. So we're gonna to wanna to add that data. So we can go select data, right click the chart, select data, add uh, under the series name, we can call it, uh, we can call it growth. Uh, maybe it's year over year growth. And under the values, we're simply gonna select um, the data range for the growth. Now you can see we have a problem and that problem is that our growth numbers are actually all less than one. 25% is actually equal to 0.25. And so our, our Y axis, which describes an absolute term, doesn't work for the second, doesn't work for the second data set, which is why we need a secondary axis. The way you do this is you select your data and you can right click it and you can format the data series, or you can press control one as a keyboard shortcut. And the first thing it's gonna bring up is the series options, and it's gonna let you select secondary axis. And so you can see there, we've now put a secondary axis, which describes the second data set, along with the primary axis, which describes the primary data set. Now the problem is, and maybe that's all you wanted to know when you when you turn this video on and so feel free to stop there but i'm going to go through um, a little bit of chart formatting and best practices uh, when you add a secondary axis now so if you're interested in that stay tuned now we want to always describe our axis data so for example let's pretend that this was actually sales we're going to want to let people know that it's sales we're going to use a currency to show that it's a dollar amount and we're gonna to go to layout in the chart tools here at the top, you can see my mouse, and we're gonna add an axis, axis titles, a primary, primary uh, vertical axis, and we're gonna use a rotated title. I think it tends to look best. And we're gonna call it sales amount uh, in dollars. Great, so now we know that this axis is dollars and it's equal to this amount of sales. Now on the secondary axis, we know that this is a growth number. So I use the keyboard shortcut there, control one. You can also right click and go to the format, act, format uh, tab. So we're gonna go to the number again. And this time we know it's in percent. So we're gonna put it in percent. And you can see it looks a little messy uh, with the two decimal points. So we're gonna drop that down to zero and that looks good. So we're happy with that. And we're gonna add an axis title here as well. And here you can see, since we have a secondary axis, we have secondary axis uh, menu options. And we're gonna add a rotated title. And this is gonna be uh, year over year growth. And goes without saying, it's in uh, percent. Now that's great, but there's still an issue. And the problem is you have no idea right now which data series belongs to the sales amount and which one belongs to the year over year growth. There's no way to tell. And the way that we fix that, of course, is we add a legend. 
Now, I, I'm a big fan of overlapping legends. I don't really like when you put it below the chart or, you know, outside of the chart area. I think typically uh, you can figure out a nice place to put it. And for this chart, it's often in a blank area on the chart. You can put it down here. And what we really want to do, we're going to select the data and we're going to rename it. So we're going to call it um, sales and we're going to put left hand side. And that's what that means in brackets, LHS. So the sales amount is on the left hand side and the growth is actually, and we're just going to add it right hand side. So now we know that when we look at this chart, the red line is equal to the sales and the axis, when we look at that line, uh, is on the left. And on the right, we use the percentage axis and it helps a lot. Now, what I would say beyond that uh, is really that probably the best way to describe this data or to show it is actually not by doing two line graphs. And I'll, I'll show you some something that I like to do when I have these particular types of data sets, which is a, you know, a growth against the absolute numbers. So directionally, it's often very similar. The chart looks very similar. Um, I'm often going to use a uh, column chart for one and just the points for the second. And I'll show you what I mean. So here you can see I went to the chart tools design and changed the chart type. So we're going to change it from a line chart to a column chart. And you can see it's actually only going to change one uh, chart, which is very interesting, right? I actually meant to, I did that incorrectly, I apologize. I actually meant to do it on the sales um, rather than the rather than the growth. So there you go. And I'm going to do a little bit of formatting. Uh, those of you who've watched my videos before know I'm not a big fan of the traditional um, color palettes and chart designs. I always like to, you know, change it up a little bit, make it my own. Um, I'm not going to rebase this axis. In other words, you can see that every data point is either 100 or more. So we could actually, I'll show you what I mean. You can set a, an axis minimum and you can fix it. So I could say 75 and it actually draws down my data. It can make it a little bit confusing when you're trying to, when someone's interpreted, interpreting the data from the chart uh, for the first time. So in this case, I don't think it's necessary. Um, and so on this one, what we're going to do is we're going to actually add um, some markers, which just basically at each point, um, it's going to show the design that we pick. And we'll use these little circles and make them a little bit bigger. And we're going to fill them with red or green about. And let's give them a little, um, give them a little border black border. Very nice. Okay. And we want to show some data labels on them, I think. And these data labels, uh, we're going to right click them. We're going to format the data labels and we're going to format them to, I think in this case, maybe below or above would be best. If we go above, we're gonna have to move the uh, legend again. So let's do below. I think it's reasonable. And we'll bold them. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to click this line and we're going to format the data series and the line color, we're going to say no line. And there you can see we've actually really tidied this chart up a lot. We can see our growth every year um, and we can also see the absolute numbers and maybe we'll give them some data labels as well. And we'll just keep them on the inside end which puts them near the top of each column and we'll also make them since they're a currency we'll make them a currency i actually think it's a bit busy and unnecessary so i'm actually going to remove that one now that i've seen it and keep in mind if you have some overlap that you find doesn't work like this 43 tags on a bit you can move these um, around as well by just clicking them individually so that's really as far as I wanted to go, and maybe even a little bit too far on showing you how to use a secondary axis in Excel. Uh, if there's, if you have any questions or didn't follow parts of that video, or 
you know, have want to see any other types of charts, just show them, just bring it up in the comments and let me know what you're interested in seeing and try and make that video next. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.